More rains have lashed eastern South Africa following one of the deadliest storms to hit the country. Nearly 400 people have died while more than 40,000 others have been displaced. Officials say the tragedy is one of the darkest moments in the history of the province of KwaZulu-Natal. The floods washed away homes and roads. Emergency funds have been approved to help those who've been left without shelter, water and electricity. The flooding has also interrupted fuel supplies, with some fuel stations running dry. In the Philippines, the death toll from landslides and flooding has risen to at least 167. Many people are still missing and fear dead, while tens of thousands have been forced to evacuate their homes. Storm Meggy is the second tropical storm of the 2022 Pacific typhoon season currently affecting the region. And more than 250 families have been left homeless in Bolivia after heavy rains wreaked havoc in the province of Santa Cruz. At least 170 homes have been submerged. Residents have been forced to spend the night on the streets as they wait for authorities to find a solution. We're going to discuss all of this now with Richard Munang in Toronto, Canada. He's the Africa Regional Climate Change Coordinator in the United Nations Environment Program. Richard, thank you for joining us on TRT World. The thank you for having me. The intensity of the rains and the flooding that we're seeing, is this all down to climate change? Because some of these regions are known to have high rainfall during this time of year. Yeah, thanks again. The reality is that if you close your eyes to facts, you will learn through accidents. And this is an African proverb from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Seat Assessment, which was released um, last year. And the last um, of that report was released this year. It shows that we have only 20 years for the world to hit 1.5 degrees. And as a result of this, we're going to see extremity in climate events like droughts and like floods. And when you put this within the context of Southern African region, Southern Africa region is actually warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. And so the attribution of these floods and the extreme events that we're seeing across the continent are actually related to what the science is telling us. And yes, these extreme events are connected to the changing climate. Richard, does the international community have a responsibility to help those countries that are experiencing this right now, especially richer nations who are actually huge emitters of greenhouse gases? It's their actions that are the reasons the developing world is bearing the brunt of climate change-related disasters. As I've said, the brunt of the changing climate is actually being bared mostly by developing countries and more so Africa, which have contributed the least just between 3 to 4 percent of the entire global greenhouse gases. This then means that Africa needs to be supported. And if you look at the southern African region today, that is actually suffering from these floods, actually, they need to be supported. And if you look at South Africa, for example, they have over 17 climate policies, and they've actually revised what is called climate plans or the nationally determined contributions. They need to be supported to be able to build resilience, to be able to ensure that at least people can then be able to put food on the table to strengthen agricultural production and also ensure resilient infrastructure. So support needs to be dovetailed within what countries have already put in place, the policies, the climate policies, the climate actions that have put in place, but done so in three aspects. Firstly, if you look at the Southern African region where these floods are actually plaguing millions of people, we will notice that actually they need to be able to uh, develop what is called green infrastructure, protect their wetlands so that at least they can be able to reduce this flooding. The second aspect is to actually start to make rainwater harvesting become part of national culture, national development, and support needs to go into that because after floods, there will be droughts, and actually, uh, water will be needed for irrigation. The third aspect is that if you look at those who are highly vulnerable, they are those who do not have the socioeconomic means. It means that opportunities for people, especially for young people, where we're talking in South Africa, 63% of them are unemployed, and most of them are putting secure. They need to put more money in more pockets, so that at least when there is a flood or a drought, they can then be able to move to uh, uh, other places, and they should be able to have the financial means to do so. This means that actually the support should be geared towards building on what countries are already doing, but more so ensuring that they build climate, uh, socioeconomic resilience. Richard Munang, live to us there from Toronto. Really appreciate uh, your thoughts on this uh, topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.